Woo! How's it going, folks? Welcome back to another episode. Today, oh, we got a raccoon, boys. Melee, 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 no, no. No, Melee, come here. Well, folks, was not expecting that. We just got down to the animals, and I can see another raccoon. Uh, he destroyed that. Well, he's destroyed the entire enclosure. Nice. Um, but we're, I'll go show you guys what's going on with him. But, hey, welcome back to another episode. Today, we're hopefully going to be doing a little bit of dangling. That's the goal here. We got to take care of the old Ricky problem here. Bro, we got two more. Really? Yes. We got two more. That's four, dude. Oh, my. Okay, so if you guys are new to the channel, Big Chungus. We're protecting you, my guy. We're protecting you, Big Chungus. Yeah, Big Chungus right there. So if you guys are new to the channel, um, we have had all of our quail eaten like all 40 of them and then we had two ducks eaten and so we ended up setting up trail camera surveillance and setting up a bunch of traps and we ended up getting two of them the next night um like the following night and so we thought okay we're in the clear but hey let's go ahead and move all the birds over to the big animal enclosure now all the turkeys the ducks the guineas everything is living with all these big animals because the big animals can protect them and we still had traps set out um because we set like 40 of them out not really we set like 10 but um well we got two more boys look at you rick that is four look at you look he completely shredded all of this the whole i mean this whole enclosure is toast by the way like if we ever want to use this again we're gonna have to completely redo everything everything about this enclosure is completely toast but you've got junior right here He's pissed. He completely tore that up. And then over here, you've got Buddy right here. So he's hanging out. Um, I think that's the only two that I see. So, well, we'll go ahead and get these guys dispatched and we'll move on with our day. Kind of not expected. Not expected at all. Um, but that is literally four raccoons in two nights. That is that explains why we lost as many quail and ducks as we did. I mean, how do you eat 40 quail in one night? You have a whole bunch of raccoons. So we're gonna go ahead and take care of these guys. And uh, well, we're gonna start with today's video. You guys stay tuned. Blinded by the light. All right, well, there you go. We got old Ricky's hanging out. I didn't expect that one bit but that is four raccoons now back-to-back -back nights um we'll go show you guys the, the the birds and stuff their new living conditions but you guys how you guys doing milk and toast you guys hungry what's cheese and rice doing rice what are you doing right i don't know why my voice sounds like it's not like i'm dying come here rice come back come on rice you can do it rice you got it come on you got it come on rice you got it come on now Come on, Rice, you got it. We moved their food inside, so they literally have no reason to come out except to get drink. But let's go ahead and get these guys fed. There you guys go. It's crazy how big these guys are getting. They're getting big pretty quick. But let's go check on the pond. Now you got it. Come on, you got it. Those hyacinths have been blooming. Oh, look, we got flower. Look at that guy. It's, I mean, you guys can't see anything. The sun's also not out. But we are still on the struggle bus, folks. I mean, we got the plants. We we changed the water not long ago. We put the chemicals in it. We've replaced the filters. Still looks like a bag of wieners. At this point, I feel like you just take the L as far as the clarity goes. There's really not much else we can do that I know of, unless you guys have any ideas. But so we've done the chemical stuff. We've even dyed it blue to try to prevent, uh, you know, sunlight penetration. And I think that the actual solution is like you need like a huge palm tree or something here for shade which doesn't seem super practical here the fish are still there they're not dead i mean you can't see them but if they're not floating then i assume they're not dead so anyways with that being said let's go check on the rest of the animals what are you doing donkey where's your baby donkey you're supposed to be giving birth here any day now you know that really carol that's what you think look at see the turkeys look at them turkeys are chilling we got the ducks the oh look at that guy that's the male. Look at him. He's big and plumed out. He's doing big things. What up, Llama Rose? How you doing? The guineas are over here. Oh, look at the ducks. They're hanging out. See, look at them. They're doing big. Look at ducks, guineas, sheep, Rick, Dale, Steve. What are you doing, Steve? Look at Steve. Steve, Rick, what are you fighting for? There's not even. Hey, Rick, I will beat your ass, Rick. Rick, quit. He's pissed. He wants grain. You want some grain, Rick? I know. We love you, Rick. You're kind of a, well, you're a little handful, I guess. We could call it well, in the nicest way. You're just a little handful. I know. Hi, how's it going? You want some grain? We'll give, we'll give you some grain, big boy. Dale, there's a, there's a fence post there, Dale. There you go. Llama, over here, Llama. Why do you only eat out of the scoop, Llama? Llama, no, lo, no, Llama, Llama. She is spoiled. Lucy, you want some grain, buddy? You're killing the grain duty, Lucy. Here you go, turkeys. Steve, that was for the chicken, Steve. I'm gonna give you one more in the old trough. Boom. See, look at the guineas, they're hanging out. Look at the rooster, they're not fighting anymore. They figured it out. Figured out. I don't know who's the most dominant one, but they got to figure it out. So anyways, all the animals, they're alive, taken care of. It was a good call moving them. If we wouldn't have moved them, something would have died for sure because that, that enclosure isn't predator proof because they can chew right through chicken wire, believe it or not. Fun fact, raccoons can chew right through chicken wire. Um, so they can't chew through this. They can climb this, but then Felicia would beat their ass. So they don't want that. So basically, all the look at all the birds. Look how many animals we got right here. This is incredible. This is this is just big things are happening right now. The poor the poor ducks though. I don't think the ducks the ducks figured out where the ducks at. Oh, there's see, they need it. They they'll figure out the grain duty eventually. Anyways, with that being said, we're gonna go do a little bit of dangling. You guys stay tuned. Shoo! 
Woo! All right, folks, we made it down to the pond. We are ready to go. Animals, they're taken care of. They're doing big things. Nothing's dead, and we got two more raccoons. So that is a dub in my book. But before we get started on today's fishing adventure, I want to say huge thanks to Mystery Tackle Box for sponsoring today's video. We are going to be using some of the baits out of this box today to go do a little bit of dangle. If you guys don't know what Mystery Tackle Box is, they ship a box just like this to your doorstep every single month. Jam packed with all the best fish catching baits for that time of year. And there's not just bass, there's panfish, there's catfish, there's all sorts of stuff. So even if you're not just a bass fisherman, there's stuff for you, even ice fishing. I've done a lot of their ice fishing boxes. They, they send like the best stuff in their ice fishing boxes. But since it's summer, obviously we're not gonna be using ice fishing stuff. So we're going to be uh, tearing into that, grabbing a few baits out of there. But if you guys want your own mystery tackle box for yourself, you can get your first box as low as $10 if you use promo code SMALLFISH. It'll be linked down below. Make sure you click the link in the description to get it. Use promo code SMALLFISH in order to get your first box as low as 10 bucks like i said they have a whole bunch of different packages it is a great father's day mother's day birthday christmas you don't even have to have an excuse to give it to somebody trust me they're going to appreciate it and it's the gift that keeps on giving because every single month they get that box so every single month they're going to be constantly reminded of you so for all you ladies watching you got a boyfriend he likes to give it a dangle you want him to think of you at least once a month hope it's more than that but if you want that just reassurance get him in a good old-fashioned mystery tackle box for as low as 10 bucks use more of a small fish so anyways we're going to tie on some of the baits in the box and we're gonna get to dangle the only problem is we've got a lot of weeds going on actually the pond's really low it's actually supposed to rain um so our goal today is to catch fish before it rains um we've got like an hour is what they're predicting before freaking katrina hits but lots of weeds going on here so i don't know how exactly it's gonna go the water is low i've never seen it this low before i mean it's low because i pulled the the drain plug or i opened up the spillway um because i didn't want it to overflow with the rains that we were having this spring probably should fill it back up but for now i mean i don't mind it being low it gives me kind of peace of mind that hey your pond's not gonna go flying over the dam um and it honestly it doesn't really affect the fishing because the fish are not up against the bank this time of year anyway they're out in this grass or in the edges so it doesn't really matter it gives me peace of mind not a big deal and if it stays low i'll be i have a chance to kind of redo that boat ramp because that boat ramp's kind of toast right now but with the water high i couldn't really get the excavator there. anyways i'm babbling we're gonna go ahead and get this boat launched in the water do some dangling you guys stay tuned boom folks right here these are the three baits i picked out of the box to start with we're gonna try to dangle with a bunch of different ones but we got spinner bait this is a staple on everybody's tackle box it's a white and chartreuse good color this stick bait right here and uh it's it's actually kind of in more of a natural color kind of like a brown you go pumpkin looking deal but i think that'll work the water's really clean so that'll look pretty much like a night crawl if you guys ever seen a night crawl they kind of have that pinkish orangish look to them and then we've got the top water frog we can't fish with that top water frog and this guy he has realistic legs the lunker hunt lunker frog so we're gonna get these three baits tied on the boat's draining of water right now and we're gonna launch it and hopefully catch a couple fish all aboard you got your sea legs captain sure Oh, no. I asked if you had your sea legs. I was stable, I thought. <laughs> I, was, I thought I was stable. <laughs> hey, how's it going, folks? We made it out. I, I had a chastity and then no battery, so you guys are going to get the old fashioned camera guy POV, I guess. And hopefully we catch a couple fish. So we're starting off with the old top water frog. So this guy kind of gives it like a, I don't know, kind of just looks like a little frog hopping along. A little realistic legs. Instead of the spaghetti string legs, it's got some more realistic stuff, so hooks on it. There's a lot of grass here. Um, I mean, honestly, probably too much. We've we've treated the brute bakery before uh, for weeds. I mean, there's a lot of open. We so we treated we treated the brute bakery because it got choked up with weeds, like literally choked up. So then the fish basically got you know, if there's too many weeds, believe it or not, it chokes the oxygen levels, and then the fish die, which is what happened to the brute bakery, which is why there was no bass in it as of like two years ago. Now there is because we stocked them. But obviously, I don't want that to happen to my lake and have like a summer kill, is what they call it. But there's as you can see, there's a lot of open water, so I don't think I don't think a summer kill is really the issue. Honestly, I don't know if chemicals would do it because I like. I like having some weed because it gives the fish cover, gives the bluegills kind of a spot to kind of hunker down and hide out just a little bit. Gives a place for the bass to ambu ambush fish, but like, especially down by the boat ramp, it's pretty brutal. So we're kind of brainstorming a little bit. Do we do chemicals? There's also an option of adding grass carp, which I think they call them like a mur, A-M-U-R. Um, that's also an option in order to get the weed levels down. I don't know if it's a good idea. I appreciate we do that at the Brute Bakery. I don't really know if that's like a legit way of controlling the weed. So we're, we're kind of contemplating that a little bit. I'm just giving you guys kind of pond updates, I guess, while I fish. So we're thinking about putting some carp in here, maybe, um, and kind of control the weeds just a little bit. It just, maybe if we could tone it down like 10%, 20%, I think we'd be chilling. So anyways, that's basically the update on the pond. Water level, low, clarity, good. Maybe Big Birth will be sitting up in the weeds today. All right, so we're gonna put this frog to the test here. I see a bullfrog. We're gonna see if we can catch a frog with a frog. Since this thing looks super realistic, I think we're gonna be able to fool this frog into thinking it's another frog and then biting it basically oh 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 come on got him got him oh see even he thought it was real what up rick come on junior there you go 
See, look how realistic that looks. Frog on frog ash. Too bad Banjo's not here. He would, uh, he'd, he'd like the old catch and cook right now. But that's a nice size bullfrog. That's some good legs right there. But see how its legs look just like his. A little realistic looking. And even the belly. Look at the belly. So it's white and yellow. You spin this guy around. Look, white and yellow. Look at that. Match the hatch, folks. At least for frogs. Get your old pliers. If you guys do find yourself hooking a frog, this is how you do it. Grab your hook that is hooked itself into the frog. Grab it. Rotate it. Look at that. Well, you try to jump in the boat. Boom. Hey, first catch of the day. Not a largey, but it's the old bullfrog. So at least we know that th this frog looks realistic enough for a bull to fool a bullfrog. So hopefully this looks good enough to fool a bass. Oh, what up, Rick? Hey, what up, Junior? You skinny little sucker. Look at that. I've never seen a fish that skinny in our pond. Why does he look like that? There's so many bluegill running around, I can't believe he looks like this. Hey, even little boys gotta eat sometimes. But that's, that is not a good looking fish. That's a stunted, nasty looking thing. We really should take this guy out. We didn't bring a cooler or anything to keep him alive, unfortunately. But maybe one of these days, let me know if you guys think it's a good idea come out keep anything about like this size like that that guy needs to come out he's he's a stunted looking guy let me know what you guys think is that a good idea to uh take those guys out maybe we put them in the little pond maybe we put them in the brute bakery brute bakery's got lots of bait lots and lots of bait too much bait we need more bass in there but let me know what you guys think we're thinking about doing it coming out here having a little fishing derby and keeping a bunch of bass you know all the small ones not eating them of course but then just taking them either to the brute bakery or like i said the other pond and uh getting them out of here just because i mean that fish was not healthy and i think he would thrive a little bit better in a different pond so let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below oh, oh there's a fish got him there we go i let him eat that he didn't even spit it out i wasn't sure he had it what up ricky dude why are they so skinny you boys you got to go up in the shallow water where all them bluegills are at there's a bunch of bluegills up by the uh, boat ramp you got that hook Right in the top of his mouth. He had this thing way down there. Another skinny fit. I mean, he's not as bad as the other one, but definitely not, definitely not big Nebraska brutes. You know what I'm saying? So they need a, they need a little bit of work. I don't know. I, I mean, I feel like we've put so many bluegill in here. I don't think adding more bait is the solution. I think taking away largemouth is probably going to be more efficient than taking or putting more bluegills. I mean, I've put thousands of bluegills in. Here. There's bluegills everywhere. Like we go up in this grass, you'll see bluegills like this. That that guy could have eaten. I'm not sure why he's not eating them. There you go. Bass number two on the old frog. Here we go, folks. Made the old switch. We've got the stick bait on here. Texas rig. And we've got the bush dreams are made of. So here we go. Oh yeah. Ooh, a little splash. There's something that splashed right there. Oh, he's got it. Oh, come on. Oh, I got to catch up. He's got me in the bush. He's got me in the bush. Oh, come on. Bush. I'm in the bush, folks. He's got me in the bush. We're going. We're going. Hold on tight, Rick. Oh, he had me in the bush. You're kidding me. What the heck? You've got to be joking. Nah, just ruin the bush. First cast. Wrap me in the bush. I suck. I knew that was the cast, dude. I, it was a far cast. Probably should have made it a little bit closer. He just—he had all the time in the world to, to wrap me up. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But let's see if see, there might be one by this little stump right here. Man, I thought Jimothy was going to be there for sure. We blew it, folks. We had—we had a shot. We had an opportunity. Bush dreams are made of complete fail. So, folks, um, I'm going back to the old topwater frog just because I mean the weeds. The weeds back here are, are bad. This is—I mean the boat ramp's bad. I mean the middle of the lake's not too bad, but this is like this is pretty bad. There's just an obnoxious amount of weeds. Like I said, it's good for frog fishing, good for fish cover, but just we just need to tone it down just a little bit. But we'll see if there's any allergies lurking back here. Huh? <laughs> you got a river monster in here? Dude, what was that? There might be a grizzly bear over there. That's not a muskrat. So I wonder if that, I wonder if there's a beaver. So for, you guys probably couldn't hear it, but it sounded like, if I threw like four bowling balls in the water at one time, do that twice. That's what we just heard up against the shore over there. Well, I have to investigate. I'm gonna try to catch this little fish, like a little bass. Now I lost where I was. Eat it. God. Oh, did you see that? He came out of the water completely after it. All right, let's see if he eats it again. Got him. He came back. What up, Junior? What up, Junior? How's it going? Woo! Oh, yeah, you got like a little salad with that dinner, huh, buddy? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. He got him good there, boy. Yes, sir. Skinny guy. That's pretty neat, though. What, how I saw him is he, he like popped up and I saw like, like a little bait fish or a minnow went flying and I was like, oh, that's probably a bluegill or a little bass. It really wasn't that small of a bass. We got to go investigate that. There's something over there. It's, it looks like it's up under that tree. Like a, there's a cave under there. And the thing is the water is really low. So if there is some type of den, we'll be able to see it. We might be declaring war on some beavers out here. I don't like beavers out at the lake because they, well, they can dam up the dam and then your whole pond basically floods and it's not good. So let's go check it out. It's right here. You see the, the path right there? That light color? I wonder if that's why it's dirty back here. I wonder if he's running around. 
around. You think he's sitting in there right now? I'm kind of scared. I should have brought a gun. Beavers are mean, man. See how it's all muddy right here? See the oh, see he swam. See the cloud? He's under there. He's he's right here somewhere. See the cloud forming in the in the light colored sand. You can see the cloud. It just came up. He's there. I bet he's got a tunnel. That's wild. I bet it's a beaver. I mean, it was the loudest. <laughs> like it's them slapping their tail usually but you can see their their run i'm looking on the bank to see if i see any claw prints or anything like that my freaking trapping senses are tingling right now i'm ready to you know what i mean give it the old one too there is a beaver hut right here which i thought was an old beaver hut could be a new one i guess or it could be they could have came back i guess i've never seen a beaver we've seen muskrats not beavers i'm gonna get us a little closer and see what we can see under this tree oh yeah 100 percent there's a hole. There's a huge hole back there. I don't see it. That's it. Yeah, that's their den. Weird. So they're they're completely burrowing up under that now. I wonder if he's back. I he's back there. We would have seen him swim out. I feel like, right? He might be doing a. For those of you old viewers, not old, but you know, maybe the last year or two. Back when we did the old boom boom against the beaver dam. Actually, you can't do that on their huts. If they ever dam it up, I guess we could do it, but you can't. It's it's illegal. Just just remember that. But either way, we might be declaring war on some of these beavers. There is a huge. I wish I would have like a chainsaw. We can cut this tree out to look. But it looks like they dug a huge hole in the side of the bank and then. I know how well you guys can see this, but there's a big wood. Basically, you know, that, that's a den. But that's been here since I moved in. I've never seen a beaver. So maybe there's a tunnel. They go in. They might have it burrowed all the way back. I mean, they can they can move a, a large amount of mud really fast. But either way, I don't know. I just figured to take you guys along the journey here. We heard something that sounded like the Loch Ness Monster running around. So we had to investigate. I think my my assumption is it's a big old beaver. Shoo! Yeah, I just tried jumping off that boat. It didn't really work. Anyways, folks, well, we're getting off the water. There's a big storm coming, like I said. It says like 10-ish minutes, and we don't want to be stuck down here in the lake. We we almost had that happen the other day, but uh, we don't really want that to happen today. So, anyways, um, we like we kind of discussed it a little bit as we were fishing. We, we kept fishing for another like, 30 minutes since we saw like that beaver. Oh, look at that bass. He's chasing those bluegill right there. He's just a little guy. I don't know if you guys can quite see this guy, but I bet you can see him. I don't even have the old Mondo's not can see him. He's just, he's cruising. All, but tons of bait fish, lots of bluegill. I don't know why these fish are so skinny because there's like, I don't know if you guys can see all these little bluegill right here. Tons of little bluegill just hanging out. Anyways, um, we kept fishing like 30 minutes past the little beaver deal. Um, we were thinking, like, all right, what do we do with the weeds? What do we do with these? So then I called my buddy Beamer, uh, Beamer Fishery, and asked him, I said, do you think putting those grass carp immersed would really help? If so, how many? He suggested like 24, but I didn't want to go too heavy with it, especially like to start. So I told him, hey, ship me 12 of them. Um, and so he said they'll be here tomorrow. So instead of us driving all the way out there and all the back today so it's gonna rain so by the time we get back it'll be pouring rain we did that one time where we launched where we dumped fish in here and it's pouring rain it really wasn't that fun so um he's gonna ship them he said he's gonna overnight them to us and so we're going to get some invasive species we're gonna get some carp um i have no idea how big they're gonna be or anything like that um but we're gonna throw them in here maybe they'll maybe they'll help maybe they won't at worst case i mean come out here with a little spotlight and start shooting them at night they come become a problem that wouldn't be too bad i like the old boat fishing anyways with that being said i'll see you guys tomorrow Cheers! All right, folks. Well, it's actually the next day. We got the shipment of carp in. I think they call them immers, but uh, look at the old dog. They're chilling. What are you doing, Millie? What are you doing, Lucy? <laughs> look at them running around. Come on, Millie. What are you doing, Lucy? Go swimming, Lucy. Come on. We got we got training to do. What oh, the what heck? Since when does she swim? Oh, oh god. She's on hex game mode, looking for them frogs. Look at this. Come on, Lucy. Go go get in the water. We got training to do for duck hunt. You got it. No, you got it. Go get him. Go get him. You got it. Oh, you got it. No, you got it. You got You got it. All right, anyways, folks, we're going to, uh, well, we're going to unbox these carp. I don't think I've ever gotten carp in a box before. You guys ever got carp in a box before? You have now. Go ahead and get these guys unboxed. Catch and cook? No, not today. We're not. Ah. Carp or not. Car no, we're not. No. These are for the weeds. we got to take care of the weeds. So, anyways, well, let's go ahead and unbox these carp. All right. Oh, rip. All right, folks, here we go. You ever see anyone unbox a box of fish before? I have not. Oh, well, they're swimming. You're not dead. They might be some dead. Oh yeah, how you guys doing? Oh, they're swimming, right? They're doing, they're doing fish things out there. They got it. Look at these guys. Oh yeah. Well, these are just little suckers. They look pretty small. So the thing about these guys, they don't reproduce, not in ponds at least. So you're not gonna. I know some of you guys are like, why are you in releasing an invasive species? Listen, this is this is about trolling the weeds. They shouldn't reproduce. That means we're gonna have 12 carp in here. They're a problem. We start seeing them. We'll start shooting them with the bow. But ideally, they're gonna munch down these weeds a little bit and make make it a little bit easier for us to fish. I like the weeds. It gives good fish habitat, but it, it does choke down the oxygen levels a little bit. We experienced that with the root bakery. We want. Oh, Lucy's swimming. How you doing? Good job, Lucy. You got. So we're gonna go ahead and throw these guys in, hopefully control the weed population. I don't know if there'll be a physical noticeable difference. I mean, these guys are pretty small. I'm pretty sure I heard they eat their body weight once a day. So they'd only be eating like half a pound of weeds, which isn't that much. They're not big, but I mean, at least we'll try and see if they'll uh, see if they'll eat some weeds. So you guys stay tuned. Hey doggies, you, you wanna see what a carp looks like? Lucy, look at this carp. What's his name? That's Big Chungus right there. Get him, get him, get him, <laughs> get him, get him. What's this guy? Get him, get him. Yeah. Hey, Larry, Rick. Oh, yeah. You get him, Lucy. You get him. You get him. 
Probably not good for dogs. See you later, Rick. So, like I said, they're pretty small. They're really not gonna make a huge difference, maybe even this year, but they'll grow pretty quick. There's lots of weeds, pretty much unlimited food for these guys, so you wanna go fetch? Go get it, go get it, go get it, go get it. No, 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 no. All right, Lucy, you gotta retrieve this one, all right? Ready, Lucy? Come here, sit, sit. Ready? Go get it, go get it. Fetch, go get it, go get them. Go find them. You got it, go get them. Now you got it, now you got it. You got it. All right, come on, let's try it again. You got it. Lucy, sit, sit down, sit, sit. Go get it, go get it. I don't think she likes this game. All right, let's dump these guys out. See you later, Ricky. Go do fish things. Go eat some weeds and stuff. Boom. I don't know. I mean, you guys let me know. What do you think? Do you think this is a good idea? You think it's a bad idea? Yeah, Probably should get idea. this knife out of the way. You think it's a bad idea? No, just the knife right there by the dogs. No, that was not a good idea. Lucy, we need to get you a floating toy so you can. She, she's she's ready to retrieve. She's ready for she's ready for duck season. Not really. Not at all. But let me know. What do you guys think? Do you think they're so small they wouldn't really do much? Because he does sell some bigger ones. Beamer does. Um. Also, big shout out to Beamer for shipping these out to us the next day because that's pretty crazy. You can get ship. You can get fish shipped to you the next day. But I mean, I don't think it's gonna hurt at all. I don't think it's gonna hurt the pond. I think it's only going to help um, as long as they don't overpopulate and reproduce I think life will be good so anyways hope you guys enjoyed today's video a little pond management action for you guys stay tuned to the next one see you guys next time peace